Let us have our first speaker, Dr. Khaled Terras. He is from University of uh, Tunis. Tunis, right? Uh, he did his uh, IVF training from Paris. Uh, and now he uh, is the director of the IVF center in Tunis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My topic today is the f uh, about the effect of transdermal testosterone gel pretreatment on controlled ovarian stimulation and IVF outcome in low responders. We all had to face this big problem of low responders that are characterized by a diminished ovarian reserve, and those are patients that fail to respond adequately despite the maximal dose of gonadotrophin we administer. Neither GNRH agonist low dose long protocol or GNRH agonist flare up regimen gives good results in this indication, and we all thought with the beginning of the antagonist protocol that will have better result, but it was not. And what is the idea of giving androgens to improve the results in these patients? Let's review some physiological facts and some clinical facts. What is rational? We all know the relationship between the, an, um, in the, the, the androgens in the serodogenesis and the two cells theory, the production of androgens in the internal theca, thus aromatization by the action of FSH into estrogen in the menstrual cycle. But the importance, uh, the thing we are looking for is the action of androgen in the earlier phase of follicular growth. Hiller has studied in the primate the androgen and the ovarian function. And he showed that there is in the immature follicles 4.2 fold higher specific receptors of FSH than in the mature and pre ovulatory follicles. So there's much more receptors in the small follicles to FSH in the primate and into the androgen also. Androgen and folliculogenesis. We know that in the primate, in the studies of Hiller also, there is an increase of the cell proliferation and the decrease also of the apoptosis. And when treated with testosterone, uh, the preantral and the small antral follicles, there is significantly the, the, apo the apoptosis was significantly decreased. There is also an increase in the FSH receptor under the action of the androgens. The study showed also that the amaromatase activity is enhanced when the testosterone concentration is became higher. All these facts show that in the primed ovary, androgen stimulates early stage of follicular growth and primate experiments suggest that androgens may influence the responsiveness of the ovaries to gonadotrophin and may amplify the effects of FSH on the ovary. Speaking about the way of administration, androgen treatment using topically applied testosterone gel has been proven to be convenient and effective in aging and epogonadal men. So, in rhesus monkeys, treatment with dihydrotestosterone or testosterone augments follicular FSH receptors in expression, expression in granulosa cells. It promotes also initiation of primordial follicles growth and increase the number of growing preantral and small antral follicles. Perhaps these facts and these studies in the animal gives the idea to give the priming by uh, androgens to improve the follicles that are entering in the menstrual cycle. Some clinical trials to investigate the effects of androgen supplementation have been attempted. Several clinical data have implied positive effects, and I will show this data. Fratelli and Peterson evaluated androgen level in 43 normal ovulatory women before IVF treatment, and they observed that low levels of testosterone after down regulation required higher FSH dose on longer duration of ovarian stimulation, and were like less likely to achieve pregnancy. So when you have a high level of testosterone after down regulation, it seems to be better. It's the first fact. Barberi observed that testosterone level decreased significantly with advancing age, and that were positive correlation between serum testosterone and the number of OC retrieved. Howless 
suggests that in women with diminished ovarian reserve who undergo assisted reproductive technology treatment, boosting intraovarian androgen might increase the number of follicles available to enter the recruitment stage as well as the process of follicular recruitment. We all remember this rush on DHEA uh, to improve the responsive uh, for, to the gonadotrophin in uh, poor responders. And many studies have demonstrated this fact. A study by Fabregas. Fabregas used the transdermal testosterone patch, but he used it only for five days before gonadotrophin treatment, and he showed that it decreased the percentage of cycle with low responses in low responders and they were go undergoing IVF. You know how this, you, you, you see that he said it decreases the percentage of cycle with low response. He didn't say it increases the results because we all know that whatever you do, the uh, responsive is uh, poor. The main study, we will focus on this study. The main study, the study of Cheng, Hun, Kim, the main study because if it is uh, of enough strong power uh, according to its methodology and it compares 110 low responders that were randomly allocated to test transdermal testosterone gel, 55 pretreatment group and 55 control group. All the patients received estrogen and progesterone pretreatment during 21 days in the cycle preceding controlled ovarian stimulation. Daily application of 12.5 testoster te transdermal testosterone gel started from the sixth day of EP and pretreatment and continued for 21 days. That means that the androgen was stopped six days after stopping the estrogen and uh, progesterone pretreatment. Ovarian stimulation was commenced the day after last testosterone administration. That means seven days after stopping EP. REC FSH 300 unit was used and antagonist to avoid the ovulation with uh, uh, 0.25. According to the characteristic of the patient, there was the same in the two groups. According to the age of husband, the age of the patient, according to the hormonal status, the, 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 uh, same characteristic in these two groups. But the results were very interesting. And we see that in the treatment group, there were less days of stimulation, 9.6, 10.5. Less amount of FSH used, 2,500, 3,000. And less day of antagonist administration, 4.5, 5.3. More important results. The mean number of follicles recruited is most more important in the treatment group. The number of oocyte retrieved, mature oocyte, fertilized oocyte, grad one or two embryos were also better. And the implantation rate, the clinical pregnancy rate, the clinical pregnancy rate per embryo transfer were twofold higher in the treatment group. And we see for the clinical pregnancy per embryo transfer were 31% for the treated group and 15% for the control group. So the result seems to be uh, very interesting. In terms of live birth, 27.3 for the treated group and 12.7 for the non-treated group. Of course, the most more twin pregnancy in the treated group. So this study demonstrated that test, uh, transdermal testosterone gel pretreatment can increase the number of oocyte retrieved, fertilize oocyte, and grade one or two embryos and the clinical pregnancy rate as well as reduce the amount of FSH required. This study suggested also that androgen treatment might amplify the, FS, uh, the effect of FSH on the ovary. But let's see why trans transdermal de delivery system, because the absorption was good, the percutaneous absorption, there was constant concentration and there is a little intra and intersubject intra variation. The transdermal, the, 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 the epiderm had an enzyme that is 5 alpha reductase that is well spread in the skin and it is 
uh, it facilitates the diffusion and the disponibility of dehydrotestosterone on the tissues. Why 21 days? That is also very important. We, know, we remember that Fabregas used only five days. The authors did a preliminary study and they, sh they showed that using only two weeks of treatment, you have the same results according to the AFC, the mean follicular diameter and the index resistance in the stroma artery as the, without androgene. So when you don't give androgene or you give two weeks, you have the, mem the same characteristics in the ovary, morphological and the flow uh, characteristics. But when you give three or four weeks of testosterone of uh, gel uh, pretreatment, the, there is a significant increase in the IFC and the uh, AFC and the characteristics of the ovaries. So they decide to give a minimal of 21 days because of these changes in the ovary. According to uh, adverse effect, the usual adverse effect of androgen, such as acne, facial hair growth, voice deepening, and skin irritation were not seen in this study because perhaps of the short duration of treatment and the little dose uh, they gave. And uh, the treatment was well tolerated. It's important also to say that any major or minor congenital abnormalities of neonates were also were, were not found. According to the adverse effect, in contrast with the oral androgen therapy, there is no first pass metabolism in the liver, so the treatment is better. Uh, is better uh, the, the, the treatment is uh, is better and is mostly safe. Moreover, the application of TTC is easy, convenient, and painless. As conclusion, the management of low responders with diminished ovarian reserve is still a challenge. Although many studies have been undertaken to seek a method of efficient controlled ovarian stimulation for infertile women with reduced ovarian reserve. Although OC donation is very successful, alternative treatment for infertile women with many diminished ovarian reserve, effort must be made to maximize each patient's potential to use her own oocyte, especially in a country like ours, in which pro don program donations are forbidden. So uh, we are obliged to send patients abroad who want to have a donor program. These studies suggest that androgen pretreatment with TTG improves the ovarian response to controlled ovarian stimulation and the clinical pregnancy rate with fewer doses and days of REC FSH use it, and that it can be a cost effective and patient friendly treatment option to maximize the ovarian potential flow responders undergoing, undergoing IVF and ICSI. Of course, large studies have to be uh, initiated to confirm these this results, especially according to the dose given to the duration of treatment, to the repetition of the treatment, how can repeat it. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting way for improving the results in such patient. Thank you. Hi, good morning. It's a very interesting talk. Um, I'd like to ask two questions. Is there a upper age limit and a lower image limit of in which this is, um, does not work, it's not useful? In other words, you will not consider using this? Uh, the because a poor responder is not yes. e always equivalent to an incipient ovarian failure. So is there an upper age limit where this is of no use? And is there a lower age limit where you tell patients, I, I can't try anymore? Uh, you said if, if the FMH has been done to select patients. Yes, it, it, it has been done, uh, but it's difficult to, uh, to make a cutoff to give androgenes. And you know that the better uh, definition of both responders or poor responders is the responsiveness to previous stimulation. You, it's difficult to, to say, I will give testosterone for IMH under 1 or 1.5. It's better, and what that was done in this study, they said a patient that give no more than three follicles in previous stimulation. Uh, they didn't focus specially, although they have did, they did the dosage of IMH, and we, I, I showed the mean IMH, but it was not the principal uh, uh, point to decide 
if they should recruit the patient. It was the previous stimulation, the responsiveness to the, the previous stimulation. 